Hi, welcome back to Crimes in Closets. This is Beth in my closet in North Carolina. Hey, this is Christy in my closet in St. Louis. Hey, how's it going? Good. I have a really terrible hang right nail right now and it's hurting. I know, I'm sitting here watching <laughs> you pick something on your hand. So <laughs> gross, right? Picking is the worst thing ever to be a witness of. <laughs> but I hate hangnails too. Oh, <laughs> so. yes. It just happened. It's fine. Whatever. I'm waiting on my Color Street nails to come in. So nice, put my nice. Valentine's sticker ones on. I cannot do those. I have tried so many times and I can't do them. It makes me sad for you because they're so cute. Mm. It just doesn't look. Them. It looks like terrible when I do it. So I just, I just gave up on it. It's so weird too because I feel like you're very crafty. Mm-mm. No. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so what's going on? What are you doing up there? What are you doing? I'm sitting here in my big giant comfy bean bag. <laughs> it is a big giant bean bag. It it's just... very impressive. <laughs> I kind of want one. Yeah. Somebody gave this to us because wow. they had an extra one and they gave it to us. And I'm like, this is fantastic. <laughs> There's such things as extra bean bag chairs. I know, right? No, right? they're just they're, you just own them. They're not extra. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, you, you can't have it back. Listen. I'm not giving it back, Marianne. She listens. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice chair. <laughs> yeah. So what are you doing? Well, you know, I am just wondering if you've delved into this new show, Night Stalker. Oh, my gosh. No. I have just started seeing it, like, scrolling through. Because I kind of stopped scrolling through things for a little bit. And I just started seeing it on social media and people talking about it. And Everyone. Yeah. Everyone is talking about this. And I also have not started it because I'm coming off of a really deep binge on The Crown. Mm. And I'm just not ready to let go of accents yet. So I think I'm going to move to Bridgerton because <laughs> I'm hearing I'm hearing that's going to be my jam too. Mm-hmm. But. Night Stalker is only four episodes, and so that's very doable. Yeah. It's like a palate cleanse for the royals. And then go into Bridgerton, which is like Shakespearean, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know. I know it's period kind of stuff, but yes. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I'll probably watch it just because everybody talked about it or is talking about it and how great it is. But I don't I'm thinking know. Thinking we should just start it at the same time and like just plan it out. Oh, okay. Like one, two, three. Mm-hmm. It never works out when we try to watch shows together. <laughs> no, because I well, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm ridiculous about my binging. Yes, you are you, you I go dedicate. Fast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one day I'm like, Do you want to watch this together? And then two days later she's like, And I'm done. How'd you like Good. it? It's great, right? <laughs> Which one are you on? <laughs> Well, I got halfway through the first episode, <laughs> and then I got distracted by memes, as we've talked about that I do. <laughs> right. Okay. So if you guys have watched it, let us know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we'll let you know. I'm going to go add it to my key. Which, which platform is it on? Do you know? Do you remember? Netflix. Okay. I'm gonna I go did on. add it to my list. I did we'll do, do that. Do it right now. I'll... Well, I'm sitting here listening right to you. Right now. Okay, good. <laughs> While you do that, I'm going to start a story here. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> that is not the Night Stalker. Yeah. I am going to tell you another story out of Texas. Sort of. Oh, you like this Texas one. I do. I like Texas. And if everyone from Texas is the same. They are all rich. They are all like, they're all the same. It's ridiculous. And they all commit crimes. Mm, yeah. These are some real shady Texans that I'm going to tell you about today. Their names are, well, one of them's shady. But then there's other characters that are going to come in that are shady. Okay. Okay. But this is the story of Jack and Candy Mossler. I know Moss. you don't know this story. No. Mm-mm. No. I, I could not find this hardly anywhere. It was crazy. It's everyone should know this story. So how did you find it? If you I originally somebody told me about it maybe. 
like some random person mentioned it and was like, why is nobody talking about this? But it would have been like years ago. And then I randomly ran across a YouTube person who was talking about it and was like, yes, that Mm. story is the one. It is crazy. Okay. So first I'm going to tell you about Jack. Jack Mossler was actually born. I'm going to see if I can say this right. It's a French name and it's Jacquet. Okay. That's how it's pronounced. Yes, I look, I audioed it. <laughs> Jacques. <laughs> hey. But it, he, it's French for Jack. So he goes by Jack. Was born in 1895, way back in mm-hmm. the day. His father died when he was very young. So he and his, they, like, they were raised by a widowed mom who worked really hard. She did everything she could to provide for her family. Jack was super hardworking. He started out as an auto mechanic and then he was promoted to a salesperson. Then he became an auto dealer. Then he started working in finance and eventually he just struck gold and became the owner of a bunch of banks Hmm. and financial institutions all across the country. He blew up like just started buying all of these banks, buying all these financial institutions, a lot of investment companies, and he became really successful. He was rich. He was a super rich guy. Wow. And he lived in Houston, Texas. However, he had homes all over the country. Like he had a home in Florida. He had a home in Chicago, but he was based in Houston, Texas. So he got married and they had four children. He's a really good dad, hardworking man, and he's described as very generous and very kind. Everybody really liked him. So his marriage eventually dissolved, and the two of them separated, but he stayed in really close contact with his kids and just kind of started traveling. So he's this legit millionaire, newly single. Now he's a bachelor, good guy. So guess what happens? We are going to enter a platinum blonde <laughs> into the story because that's, you know, it's just what happens next as, as one story goes. <laughs> so in 1948, he met a lady by the name of Candace Weatherby. Oh. Candace was 20 years younger than Jack. She was born very poor in Georgia and she was kind of a bootstraps gal, like she pulled herself up. She made something of herself. She was very beautiful. She became a model for a number of years. And at the time that she met Jack, she was running a modeling agency in New Orleans. Wow. Okay. Weatherby, when you first said that, it it sounded like, and it sounded almost like a rich last name to me when you said Weatherby. Yeah. (laughs) Candace Weatherby. Yeah. Anyway. She She could be on the crown. Yeah. Candace goes by Candy. Mm. So there you go. That's not, mm-hmm. not not quite a sophisticated sounding. She had two kids from a previous marriages, from previous marriage, one marriage, sorry, not marriages. But at the time, she was single. Just a few months after they started dating, the two of them got married, and they moved into Jack's 28-room mansion in Houston, Texas. What? 28 rooms. Hmm. I hope she had somebody to clean. Yeah, right. And they moved in with their six kids. So remember, Jack had four, and then Candy had two. So this blended family. A few years into their marriage, they heard a story of a father who had severe mental issues and killed his wife and left their four children alone. And this story, for whatever reason, struck a real chord with this couple, and they adopted these four children. Oh, my gosh. Right? So here we are now. They move them into their mansion. So they've got 10 kids now between the two of them. Candy was very happy. She was the mother to these you know, 10 children. She was living in this mansion with this wealthy guy. They had a perfect marriage. She was beautiful. They were rich, hardworking. They were socialites with this gorgeous family that everyone loved. Mm -hmm. And they all lived happily ever after. 
Oh, I kn- you said it was going to be a good one. <laughs> the end. <laughs> no. One day in 1962, Candy gets a call from her sister, Elizabeth. Elizabeth's son, Melvin, who was 20, had been in some trouble recently with the law. He was arrested in Michigan for a con job Mm -hmm. and needed a hand up. So he was moving to the Houston area, and Elizabeth wanted to know if Candy and Jack could help him out. Like, give him a job, you know, show him around, kind of be like his family. So Katie, of course, was like, yes, sure, I will do that for him. I I will agree. So they gave Melvin a job with one of Jack's companies, and they kind of took him under their wings. Okay. However, little did anybody know that Candy would be taking Melvin under more than just her wing. Oh. The two of them began a romantic love affair an incestuous romantic yeah love affair this is mm. okay auntie candy Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> isn't that so gross okay mm-hmm. also and this is such a side note but every time i the whole entire time i was researching this case i kept hearing that song i want candy <laughs> which is so nasty <laughs> do you know what i'm talking about I want yes, candy. Yes. Okay. <laughs> My gosh. I, could, I was singing it all day today because I knew I was going to be doing this. My <laughs> goodness gonna be gracious. Time. I, keep, like, I keep singing that. I'm like, I don't know. It's gross. It's so nasty why I'm singing that. Okay. So some of Melvin's coworkers who were employees of Jack, right, started seeing Melvin and Candy together acting inappropriate. In public? Yeah, Come on. Gross. They were acting gross, so disgusting, and they were sneaking around together. So they told Jack about it. So then some of the people that worked in the mansion, no doubt the cleaners for the 28 rooms, started also mentioning things to Jack. So Jack is like, oh my gosh, this is horrendous. Like, what is going on? So he starts snooping around, and he finds Candy's diary. Oh, she has a diary. She has a <laughs> diary, okay? And it laid out all the details, all the incestuous details. So Jack fired Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. <laughs> and forbid him from coming to the house anymore or around his family. He banished him. Banished. Bad boy. So as you can imagine, Candy and Jack separated Mm-hmm. And Jack started spending most of his time in their vacation apartment in Florida. Key Biscayne, Florida. So oh. Is it Key Biscayne? I think so. It's outside Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's where he was staying. They had an apartment there. It was like their vacation place. And so he was like, I'm leaving Texas with you because you a freak. And I'm going to Florida. But during their separation, he continued to financially support Candy, and she actually received an allowance of $5,000 a week. So oh. this is the 1960s. So in yeah. today's money, that's like $45,000 right. a week. A week. That's insane. Yeah. Candy's winning. Mm-hmm. And he's gone. Jack is gone. So she continues her affair with Melvin. She it's... even loans him money to start his own business. Oh my God. Since he got fired and all, you know. So at this point, Jack and Candy had been married for 15 years. And according to their prenup, if Candy filed for divorce from Jack, she would only receive $200,000. Total. A lump sum of $200,000. If Jack filed for divorce against Candy, she would get half of his assets. Holy moly. And at that time, his estate was estimated in today's money to be $177 million. Oh, my gosh. But back then, it was like $33 million. So in today's money, it'd be 177. So wow. neither one of them wanted to file for divorce because she would only get 200,000 if she filed, but then he would lose half mm-hmm. of everything if he filed. So they don't want to. 
So both of them are set up to lose, basically, which I guess is the point of a prenup. I don't know. Anyway, Jack told Candy that even though all of this was happening, he was like, I'm still moving forward with a divorce. I still, I can't do this. Like, I can't, you're gross. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to remove you from my will. Oh, okay. So what now, Candy? Right. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break. Okay, in June of 1964, Candy brought their four youngest children to visit Jack in the Florida apartment. Okay. Candy, for years, had suffered from migraines, migraine headaches, very bad ones. And on this particular day, she was having one. And she was really sick and in bed, and she decided that she couldn't take it anymore. So a little bit after midnight on June 29th, Candy decided she was going to go to the emergency room for treatment for this migraine because she just couldn't stand it anymore. So she takes the kids with her, all four of the kids, with her to the emergency room at one in the morning. Why Mm -hmm. would she do that? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Mm -hmm. Why would she do that? So they come back home around 4.30 in the morning. And when they walk in, they find that the dog is tied up in the kitchen. They go further into the apartment, and Jack is laying in a bathrobe, wrapped in a blanket, on the floor in a pool of blood. Oh. Mm. Candy immediately calls the police, and Jack was pronounced dead at 69 years old, and his death was ruled a homicide. Candy was taken in for questioning immediately, and she said that she believed that maybe Jack was a victim of a burglary gone wrong. Mm-hmm. She had her own uh, theory. She did. <laughs> yeah. Maybe somebody broke in. The police then told Candy that the killer was familiar with the family because they tied the dog up. They mm-hmm. tied their dog up. And that Jack had actually been stabbed over 30 times and hit over the head with a blunt object. This was no burglar candy. Yeah. The murder was personal, a crime of passion. As one says. So then Candy's story changed. Okay. Because the story is not crazy enough. Mm -hmm. Candy told the police that her husband was actually a closeted homosexual. (laughs) Okay. And that this is why they were separated. And at that time, she knew that he hired prostitutes And that she would frequently come home and there would be random strangers in the house that Jack had picked up and brought home to have sex with. So this actually could possibly be true. That Mm. he was indeed a closet homosexual. And had some friends, some main friends. Like you think that is true? I, yes. Based on what you've Based on, Yes. I think that could possibly be true. Okay. Right. So, Candy says that maybe it was one of these men that Jack had picked up, like a scorned lover or just a crazy person who he didn't know very well that he picked up and he killed him. The police actually pursued this lead because they also had reports that he did, in fact, have some man friends. And so they thought, well, hmm. It does actually look like he may have been homosexual, so maybe that is what happened. But they also started interviewing people. They interviewed neighbors in the apartment building who said that they heard thumping coming from the apartment unit between 1.30 and 2 a.m. One also reported that they had heard Jack yelling something like, no, no, don't do that to me, that they had heard the dog barking and heavy footsteps going down the hallway. Hmm. Call the police neighbors. I mean, that seems right. like a lot of things to hear. Yeah. That you, you know, and it's 132 in the morning. So, like, you know, where where were you? But that's okay. Um, the police also found a bloody handprint on the kitchen counter. Also, one of Jack's cars had been reported as stolen, and that car was found parked at the airport, and there were some bloody fingerprints inside the car. 
So they thought, okay, maybe this is what happened. Somebody came in, he picked somebody up, and they came, something happened, there was a fight, whatever. They killed him, they left, they stole his car, they left his car at the airport, right? Still pursuing this lead. But then the police find Jack's diary. Mm. Rich people and their diaries. Mm -hmm. So Jack had written all about Candy and Melvin and their love affair and how stuff had gone down in the Texas mansion and how angry Melvin was and how money hungry both of them were. And he laid out very clearly that he was afraid for his life, Mm. like that he felt threatened by the two of them and was afraid for his life. And there's even one quote from his diary that says, if Mel and Candace don't kill me first, I'll have to kill them. Whoa. So the police by at this time had no clue that Aunt Candy and Melvin were a thing. So they're like, wait, whoa, hold up. So the cops are like, oh. Aunt Candy did what? So they then discovered that on the night that Jack was murdered, Melvin had been spotted in a bar just down the street from Jack's apartment by eyewitnesses and that he was also seen by witnesses driving the car that was reported stolen. So they Mm. immediately arrest Melvin. Candy hires the best attorney she could find to represent her lover nephew. The police start investigating in both Florida and Texas. They interview neighbors They interview people that work for them in Texas at their Houston home. They interview employees, co-workers. A lot of people claim that they had seen Candy with her boo thing, Melvin, all over the place and also found lots of pictures of the two of them where they had gone on vacations and were in nightclubs and at concerts. So then they found out about the prenup and that Candy filing for divorce would grant her basically chump change you know, compared to what she was used to, but that if Jack died, she would inherit his entire estate. Mm -hmm. Motive. So they found the motive. So they arrested Candy, too. Candy was like, I can't go to prison. I won't do well in prison. Everyone loves Candy. So she hired herself the best of the best and made sure that she would not spend even one day behind bars oh lord so they arrested her but she was immediately like arraigned or whatever she never ever spent any time in prison and she made bail you know just glamour in prison so because her assets were frozen she paid their attorneys in jewelry and diamonds and fur can you imagine this is like the 60s in some tech it's just so funny to think about those attorneys wives had good christmases that year mm. you know what I mean? yeah for <laughs> sure everyone gets a fur so the trial begins in march of 1966 and as you can imagine this case is huge huge case in the 1960s we i mean that we're talking about money Sex, lies, murder, adultery, homosexuality, incest. incest. (laughs) Yes. Salacious. So they restricted the courtroom to anyone who was under the age of 21. So, like, if you were under the age of 21, you could not come in the courtroom. Oh, okay. Parental discretion was advised. (laughs) Now, when Candy was confronted with these allegations of sleeping with her nephew and killing her husband... Obviously, immediately, she was like, no, 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 I would never do either of those things. But then they present all the evidence to the contrary. And her response, quote, well, nobody's perfect. (laughs) Good accent. Good accent. (laughs) Thank you. The prosecution had witnesses testifying to Candy and Melvin's affair. They had witnesses testifying that Melvin and Jack did not get along and that Melvin Melvin had actually previously made comments about killing Jack. One of the comments that he made when he got kicked out of the house was like, I'll be back in this house one day as the owner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had witnesses that said they saw Melvin in Miami. They saw him in the bar that was close to Jack's house, Jack's apartment. They saw him driving Jack's car. They had financial motivation for both of them, right? So 
obviously Candy was involved because Melvin would get nothing without her. So he's not going to kill Jack for absolutely no reason. So that's her involvement right there is the financial. And they also felt like they proved Candy's involvement because she left the house at mm-hmm. like just the right time. You know, with she all the of the kids in the middle of the night with all four kids. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right on cue. And she had herself an alibi. And the bloody handprint that they found on the ap- apartment counter and the bloody fingerprints they found in the car were Melvin's. Oh, Lord have mercy. Come on, Melvin. Wear some gloves. They matched Mel's. The defense, however, ripped apart all of these witnesses. They were able to prove that most, if not all, of these witnesses had very checkered pasts with criminal records, which they did. And they said the sightings of Melvin and Candy and all these reports that they wanted to kill Jack. They're making them up. They're all liars. They're criminals. They're not warranted. They're biased. They said that Melvin was regularly in Florida. So the fact that the person at this bar may have seen him is not crazy. He probably doesn't even know when he remembers seeing him. And that, yeah, his handprint is in the apartment. Because he was there all the time. And it was probably Melvin's blood. They don't know whose blood it was because there was no DNA. Mm. Same with the fingerprints. Can't That was Candy's car that was stolen. And Melvin drove her car because Candy let him. And so, yeah, his, his fingerprints were in there. And they can't prove whose blood that was. They don't know how long those have been in there. No clue. They claimed that Candy was very happy with her financial situation. She was getting $5,000 a week and that there really was no motive and she didn't necessarily want to divorce him. They also began bringing up Jack's homosexual activity, his risky behavior, the fact that he hired prostitutes regularly. And they also brought up that he had some, like, could possibly have had some not so nice business dealings and had made enemies and that there were people that he had financially ruined over the years. So there's plenty of other people who may Mm. have wanted him dead. The jury deliberated for 16 hours and returned with a verdict of not guilty. Oh my gosh. Guilty. (laughs) Guilty. That's crazy. Okay. After the trial, Candy and Melvin drove off together in Candy's car, and Candy threw them an acquittal party. Not kidding. Where she had a poster from the murder trial that she passed around and had all the guests sign and then hung it on her wall. Lord have mercy, Candy. Come on. Not kidding. She also inherited Jack's fortune. And changed the name of his company to Candace Mossler Investments. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin and Aunt Candy eventually broke up. Oh, and shocking. Candy, I know. They've been through so much. And Candy went on to marry another man named Barnett, who was 19 years younger than her. But shortly after they got married, he mysteriously fell from their balcony and suffered severe brain damage. Stop. And then they divorced after that. Hmm. There's very little information on how they investigated that incident, but I mean, I smell attempted murder. I don't know what you think Mm -hmm. of that. So Candy eventually died in 1976 of an accidental overdose of migraine medication. (laughs) <laughs> right? I mean, a laugh. Had it coming. Sad, but like, <laughs> she was 56. Melvin attended Aunt Candy's funeral with his new blondie girlfriend. Melvin actually went on to become a real estate developer in Houston and made millions on his own. Oh, well, I mean, good he for has, him. He, but. <laughs> I, <laughs> And we're not Team Melvin now. Come on. <laughs> he owned quite a few properties and cars and a ridiculously massive yacht that was actually known as the biggest yacht in the Western Hemisphere. Wow. I know. I feel like we should enter the obvious, like, proportion joke here, but 
is <laughs> y'all thought it too. So whatever. I was wondering is would he have been like uh featured in lifestyles of the rich and famous? Yeah. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> I don't know if incest is glamorous, then maybe so. Melvin died in 2010 at the age of 68. Law enforcement never had any other leads or suspect, and it is still widely believed that Candy and Melvin killed Jack and got away clean. Well, duh. I also (laughs) believe that. (laughs) But Gosh. everyone is dead. I mean, Holy not their children. Cow. Dun, dun, dun. That's crazy. Isn't that the craziest story? Why has why is this not everywhere? I don't know because that's, that's just it's so salacious. Exactly. There's it's almost so fake. many elements. <laughs> yeah, it's almost not even real. Like as you kept reading, you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> No, there's incest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow, that that that's nutty. I'm I'm so glad you found that one. Also glad. Yes, it's yeah. actually been on my list for a minute, and I, it's one of those ones that I wrote down their names, but I didn't write any details about it. And so when I was going back through my list, I was like, I wonder what that story was about. And so then I started delving into it and was like, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> gosh i'm so glad you did this one after last week's but like you mm. know just a little bit because we always kind of not joke but well we do joke but talk about how those ones that are like so long ago are just a little easier to like talk about it's like so true <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know why because he was still brutally like murdered and awful like, oh my gosh you know, but... such a great man yeah. And she really, why did she do that? Like, she had such a good life. Right. And if they had just both just kind of stood their ground and neither one of them, like, they just would have been fine. Honestly. Have a, don't sleep with your nephew. Well, don't yes, do don't that, sleep with honey. Your nephew. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, that part, I'm just saying, if neither one of them had filed for divorce and they just kept living the way they were living, like, they both would have been fine. She would have been great. He would still be a millionaire, even though he's giving her money, like, you know. Right. They would have, you know, like there was no need for her to kill him. <laughs> in my head, clearly. But, you know, in some crazy woman's mind, it's a little different, crazy I guess. Crazy candy. Crazy candy. Like pop wow. rocks. <laughs> pop. That's a crazy candy. I don't know. <laughs> I love pop rocks. I do too. But they're crazy. I haven't had that in a what long time. What kind of mystical ago. crap makes them do that in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Well, that was a little bit of a tangent, but okay. Uh, anyway, that was awesome. That was great. It's fantastic. So many things in there <laughs> that just, I'm never going to forget that one. Some that I forget. <laughs> never going to forget that. <laughs> well, good. Anyway. Anyways. All right. Well, gosh. Um, thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for the continued support. Keep, uh, keep listening, please. Keep suggesting stuff to us. Give us some case suggestions. Suggest us to your friends to listen to us. We Do would it. love yes. that. Yes. Go ahead and rate us. We haven't really asked for that in a while, I feel like, or maybe we have, and I just haven't paid attention, but rate us no, on Apple. So. Yeah. Give us a good rating. We, uh, that helps us. And you know where to find us. We got the Instagram, you know, we got the Facebook. Go ahead and find us and interact with us and check out our merch sometime. We've got all those links in on our Instagram page. There's a link in our bio that you can get to all that stuff from. So go check us out. And always remember, the world is scary. People suck. Hide in your closets. 